So, coming on to Halloween, I figure a nice Irish ghost story would, have, would be in order. So, Ireland has a, a reputation for being a very hospitable place. If you need a place to sleep, you can knock on almost any door, and they will give you their most comfortable bed, they'll put delicious food in your belly, and if they're in a good mood, maybe they'll let, they'll let you sample some of the local moonshine. And I'm told that that, that is still the case today. So once upon a time, there was a young man, a traveler, who was walking the roads of Ireland when he found himself between two towns after dark. So he made his way to the closest house he could find with a candle in the window. And he knocked on the door. The door was opened to him, and there was an old woman who welcomed him in. She showed him where he would sleep. She put food in his belly, and they sat by the turf fire, sipping the local moonshine. Now the, young, uh, the old woman turned to the young traveler, and she said, so do you have uh, maybe a song you could sing to pass the time? Because if, if you're going to be housed and fed, well, of course, you're expected to entertain. But the young man said, I'm sorry, I've, I'm really not much of a singer. Well, then maybe you know a story, something you know, something you like. Maybe news about what's going on in the other towns. And the young man shook his head and he said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really not much of a storyteller. And please, do not ask me to dance. It's just embarrassing. So the old woman looked at him with a dark look across her face, came across her face, and she said, Well, then why don't you pick up that white enamel bucket and go out to the well and draw water? Make yourself useful. This he could do. So he picked up the bucket and he went out into the darkness, and there he found the well. He tied a rope to the bucket and he lowered it into the well. He heard it splash below, waited for it to fill up with water, and then he was getting ready to pull it back up when he felt that it was, it was caught on something. He pulled and he tugged and he could not get that bucket to move. So he wrapped the rope around his wrist and he reached deep into the well, bracing himself against it, getting ready to pull with all of his strength. When suddenly, someone pulled on the other end and the young man fell into the well. He fell down, down into the well and because the rope was wrapped around his wrist, he was pulled through the water and he fell at the other end hard upon the ground. The young man looked up and he found himself in a strange land. He looked up, he could see the well sticking out of the sky. And in front of him there were three dark men. Well, if you could call them men. Their skin was pulled tight across their bony faces. And where there should have been eyes, there were only black sockets. And they looked at him. Who will carry the coffin, said the first man. I don't know, said the second man. Well, who else but the traveling stranger, said the third man, and they picked up the young traveler and they put him underneath the coffin and they began to run. And they ran away from the well and they ran through the fields and they ran through the forest and they ran into the cemetery until finally they stopped. And the young man fell exhausted on the ground. And still, the men looked at him. Who will dig the grave, said the first man. I don't know, said the second man. Well, who else but the traveling stranger, said the third man, and they threw him a shovel. And they forced him to dig a grave that was nine feet deep and six feet wide. And finally, the young man climbed out of that hole and fell exhausted on the pile of dirt. And still the men looked at him. Who will lie in the coffin, said the first man. I don't know, said the second man. Well, the traveling stranger wasn't waiting around to hear the opinion of the third man. He just got up and he started to run. And he ran out, of the, ran out of the cemetery and he ran into the forest and he looked behind him and he could see the dark men. They were chasing him. And there was fire that was coming out of their mouths as they reached for him. And he continued to run. He ran out of the woods and he ran across the meadow heading for the well that was still sticking out of the sky. And he picked up the bucket and he, and he started to climb the rope. And he looked behind him and he could see the men were climbing after him. And now there were billows of black smoke coming out of their eyes as they reached for him. He climbed that rope. He held his breath through the water and got out of the well. He untied the bucket and he ran for the house. And he got to that door and he was banging on it. Let me in, he said. Let me in or the dark men, they will get me. The door was open to him and there was the old woman and she said, Who doesn't have a story now to tell? <laughs> And that young man fell, fainted right there on the doorstep. And when he woke up in the morning, he could feel rain on his face. He looked around for the old woman, but he couldn't see her. He saw the bucket there lying on its side. But he noticed that the roof had caved in. And there were crows on every wall. And he could see that no one had lived in that house 
for many years. And he picked up his bag and he ran out of there as fast as he could. And all the days that he roamed Ireland, he was never without a story again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a story.